guys, it's me, Janice Cardoso from NBC Universal. I have to say, I'm sneaking one in. Why? Because tonight is the night that I've been waiting for. I know you're all getting nervous because you're like, who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? But I'm here to tell you, I'm the winner. Why? Because I got to meet every single one of you. So, to my estrellas, felicidades. Tonight is for you, but also for me who has the honor of showing you off to the world. You're gonna kill it, can't wait. Salud. Hello and welcome to the Nosotero second annual Yatu Sabe Monologue Slam presented by NBC. I'm your host Orlando Leyva for this special edition of Yatu Sabe. Due to the pandemic, we're coming to you remotely this year because we don't want you to get sick or get us sick. You get me? You get me. So we're bringing you 12 monologues written and performed by some very talented Latinx creators. And guess what? You're gonna see videos from celebrity judges and on top of it, as a plus, you get to vote from home for your favorite monologue or performance. Before we get started, let's hear a special message from two very special dudes. I love these guys. They're always very supportive towards me. The president of Nosotros, Joe M. Gonzalez, and his vice chair and producer of Yatu Sabe, J. M. Longoria. Joe, take it away, buddy. Thanks a lot, Orlando. So again, to everyone watching this right now, we welcome you. We are excited about our second annual Yatu Savis Monologue Slam. Of course, because of the trying times we're in right now, we had to kind of pivot a little bit and take this to more of an underground setting. So it actually makes it a lot cooler, in my opinion. To everyone that submitted, thank you for doing that. We're gonna come back next year even stronger for create more opportunities for you guys. And congratulations to all the finalists in the acting segment of this and the writing segment of this. I mean, the talent is amazing. It's just proof that there is so much emerging Latino talent out there and the opportunities just have to be given for them to shine. And again, a special thank you to NBC as our presenting sponsor this year. We couldn't have done it without you and we look forward to the long-term partnership. Again, Nosotros stands for we. We are stronger together when our voices are echoed as one. So to tell you more about the Yatu Savas Monologue Slam, I'm excited to introduce J.M. Longoria, our producer of the program. Thank you, Joel. We are so excited to introduce to you this incredible group of Latinx actors and writers to you tonight. Nosotros recognizes that there is still a little bit of a disconnect within our Latinx community. And also we're still being portrayed negatively in TV and film. So we felt it was necessary to put this program together. The Yatu Savas Monologue Slam, which is a pop-up underground monologue slam which provides a platform for emerging and established Latinx actors and writers to be seen, to be heard, to show our original stories on TV. And we couldn't be happier with the group that we've selected. We received thousands of submissions from the US and abroad. So thank you to our partners at NBC for your support and to our entire Nosotros team who has helped put this amazing event together. Yeah. Thank you, Joel and JM. You guys almost brought a tear to my eye. And now let me give a special thanks to our sponsors and supporters. We truly appreciate you. Don't forget to follow Nosotros on Facebook and Instagram at Nosotros.org. And for more information on how to become a member, be sure to go to Nosotros.org.com. Now, let the show begin. My name is Bernadette Rivero, and I wrote a monologue called Los Tecolotes del Norte. I put my heart into it. You know, that's why I say it's more of a tragedy than a comedy. It does come from a lot of experiences I've had um, where I've been misjudged, where my abilities have been misjudged. And I want to always start with something that feels true and real to me. Sometimes it's my lived experience or it's the lived experience of my family or my friends around me. I think it means now it's a little more open to bring in our color and our flavor and our experiences as part of the Latino community. And oh my gosh, this monologue uh, opportunity was such a great way to, to do that, to do it on paper and the excitement of getting to see someone act it out and bring it to life. 
it's exciting. Knowing that there's organizations out there like Nosotros, like NVC, that care about Latino writers and actors, performers, storytellers, and the stories we have to tell right now is amazing. So my name is Juan Pablo Munevar, and the monologue that I'm performing is Los Tecolotes del Norte. I just really resonated with the energy, with the, with the anxiety of like trying to be good but also trying to, you know, do this job correctly. And also it stems a lot from stereotypes. So in, in, in the monologue, there is a part where it basically, it's assumed that my character speaks Spanish. Every friend that I have that is non-fluent Spanish speaker has had this happen to them, where just because they look a certain way, people just assume immediately you're Spanish and they don't even, you know, take the time to ask or they're put into positions where, I don't know, and they're judged for it. Marjorie, hi. M Marjorie, um, I'm like super thankful to be here because, uh, because I know that interns don't usually get asked to events this big and believe me, I can tell by the roar of the crowd out there that this event is like big, big. Um, but I feel that there has been a, um, a misunderstanding of a very fundamental sort. See, um, when I said that I was from the border, I can understand why you interpreted that as me having the skills necessary to, you know, help the firm welcome this band to the stage because I get it, I get it. It's not every day you launch a new line of wireless headphones on a date that just happens, happens to fall on Cinco de Mayo. But I'd like to pause here to uh, mention that technically and culturally speaking, Cinco de Mayo is only celebrated in Pueblo, Mexico. And the band out there, the band is from Zacatecas a few several hundreds of miles to the Northwest. I'd also like to mention that, um, Marjorie, I am not from the Mexican border, okay? I'm from the Canadian border. I'm from the Canadian border, okay? I was, I was very clear about that in my intake interview. I'm sure it's in my school file somewhere. Oh God, I hear an accordion. Okay, um, it's happening. Okay, uh, Marjorie, I cannot stand up there and be the go-between them and the CEO, you have to sober the interpreter up. There are bagels to the left of you in the conference room. I am, I am terrified of public speaking, especially in front of hundreds of people. Oh my God. And the press. <laughs> that is, that is very hard for me to admit out loud because Marjorie, I come from the land of stoic politeness, hockey, and ice fishing, okay? I, <sighs> I know I should probably leave the supply closet, but God, it just feels so safe and warm in here right now. Okay. Marjorie, what do I do? Because, oh God, I hear footsteps. Okay, they're coming for me. Okay, okay, we're fine, we're fine. Oh my God, I'm gonna puke. Ugh. Marjorie, I, I don't even speak Spanish. My parents, my parents are Brazilian. Hi, hi, uh, uh, just, just one second. <laughs> um, if you could just uh, give me a call back when you get this, that'd be great, thank you so much. Hi, my name is Rosalind Area. I am the writer of The Practicality of Oneness. When it comes down to it, it's about love and it's about heartbreak. But I think that I put it against the backdrop of, of the current events that are happening and what happens when we love someone that is and has grown up in a completely different world. I hope that people can resonate with it. And I, I hope that I'm speaking to an audience or that the, the monologue speaks to people who maybe haven't had their voice honored as much. Because I feel like with this whole amazing, incredible opportunity that Yathu Sabes is and giving to us Latinx writers is that it gives us space to articulate our own unique individual experiences, which are very different and varied from one to the next. My name is Dolores Avery Pereira and I'm performing The Practicality of Oneness. The piece is so timely and especially now with all of the protests that are happening, Black Lives Matter, that's very important to me. I've been out on the streets and I've seen it firsthand and just seeing this piece of how complicated it all really is. And that really just drew me immediately when you have this relationship with a, a person that is not of color and is a cop and you love them, but they don't 
but there's still that, that disconnect. Being Afro-Latina, right, has been a struggle. I just feel like I haven't really been able to be both. <laughs> a lot of the times it's like you're casted, you have to be black or you have to be Latinx, and sometimes you don't see a lot of characters that, that are both. Um, or I, I don't get to explore both parts of me, both sides of me. So this has been a great opportunity that I get to be both and I get to express myself fully, and it means a lot. Are we gonna get along? You told me people decided as much before they even opened their mouths. What's it gonna be? We could save some time. It's not just a damn protest. And I refuse to be told to sit inside while you're patrolling. Waiting to hear news that you've been... I feel better out there. And in a weird way closer to you while still standing up for myself and my black brothers and sisters. We've never been on the same side of the line, you and I. You told me people choose to get along. We decided a long time ago, before you got your badge, before we met. My roots are soaked in the blood of my ancestors, and I feel them coming up cracking my bones, shaking me awake, refusing to let me walk this earth in silence. It would have been easier to be with someone who shared my history, my skin, but I excused it because a kiss from you is like taking a breath, a breath underwater. And this world is the vast, deep ocean I can't think of the vastness because I feel like my guts will just ocean vertigo. I reach out for your hand and you keep me from getting lost in the blue. You bring me up to the light. But my other hand is holding firmly to those of my ancestors stuck and sunken below. So I protest to bring 500 years of colonization stories to the surface. We get along when we realize we're the same. Please help me free your ancestors from the darkness. Whoa, those were some powerful performances. I, I'm getting emotional again. In the meantime, while I get myself together, let's hear from our celebrity judges. They picked the actor finalists. Hi everyone, Nicholas Gonzalez here. I am not wearing an Osotros t-shirt, but I am wearing the underwear. And I wanted to say congratulations to all the actor and writer finalists. Um, it has been a joy for me to be a part of this process and to, uh, to witness the work that everybody's been putting in. And I just want to say that um, have fun tonight. And most importantly, remember what got you here. It'll probably serve you. Hi guys, Adria Sparza here. I just wanted to extend a huge congratulations to the actor and writer finalists. You guys have done some amazing work. It has been so exciting to be a part of your journey. I, I can't wait to see what you guys do next. I just wanted to really quickly say, have so much fun tonight. Do your thing. Break all the legs. Besos. Thank you to our celebrity judges. Great insight. Now, let's get back to the show. I want to hear more monologues. My name is Brian Torres Day, and my monologue is One Old Pissed Off Mexican. We have certain things that we're proud of, right? Mariachi music, um, the way we drink, right? Food, we're proud of. And I feel like that is something that I wanted to expand on and how it kind of runs congruent with like American culture. Like we have a certain pride when it comes to like Mexican candy. And I just wanted to have, I had this idea of like, what's one thing that would like make someone want to like explain it, right? Cause if you ever ask her like, why are Mexicans so proud of their food or their drinks or their dancing? And it's like, I just wanted to have one guy just break it down and I use Mexican candy because I feel like that's the most comedic version of it. My name is Michael Martinez and I'm performing One Old Pissed Off Mexican. 
being a Latinx actor right now feels important. It feels like I'm seeing doors open. I'm seeing more stories on TV, shows like Pentified. And it's beautiful to see like yourself on TV. <laughs> I remember not seeing that growing up. And being able to see it on TV makes you think like, I mean, there I go. Like I could, if they can, I can. It's an honor to perform today for all those people that I know what they're doing right now. They're standing watch. They're in places they don't necessarily want to be. And for me to feel like I'm performing for them today, man, that, that's, that makes me feel like I got this special gift. And for anybody out there that's a veteran and is thinking about transitioning to acting, do it. <sighs> mm, hurts so good. Well, of course Mexicans put chile on their candy. Our candy, it defines our culture. Hmm? We suffer. <sighs> Even in our snacks. <clears throat> But that's a good thing, hmm? Look, I remember when my mom gave me my first piece of Mexican candy. I was five, right? And it started off as this delicious little treat. But the next thing I remember, I woke up in the emergency room. <laughs> you see, our candy, it prepares you for life. You know, some days it's sweet, delicious, right? But when you least expect it, It's like a chunkla to the back of the head. Just like life. Here, check it out. See these little babies? Hmm? You see this right here? This helped me get through some hard times. Look, I remember when I lost my job. Mexican candy. Hmm? When my wife left me for my brother, I thought, Mexican candy, huh? No, no. When I got my third DUI, you know, I thought, well, I fucked up. Okay, but you know what, that's besides the point. Y'all wanna know why Americans are so depressed? I'll tell you, actually, you know what? I'll show you. Reese's peanut butter cups. Hmm? They send the wrong message. They say, life, it's easy. This is the exact opposite of Mexican candy. Look, look at this, look at this. You got a silky, chocolatey outside. And check it out when you bite in. Creamy, smooth peanut butter. Oh, mames! Get that shit out of here, man! Mmm. Look, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Okay, and I really want you to think about it, okay? On this hand, we have little Lupito. Okay, who has suffered his first skin graft after biting into his first piece of pulparindo? And on this hand, you got Chad, who tosses back M&Ms like white women go through their anxiety medication. Hmm? Who's gonna win? Think about it. Hmm, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. My name is Nicole Luna and I wrote the monologue, The Line. I was in the middle of writer's block. Um, so when I saw this competition, I was like, I have, to, I can write a monologue, I can finish a monologue. And I realized I don't write monologues, but um, all of my characters at their core carry an ounce of me. So I guess I inspired the piece. Um, I've always had like an identity issue and I just amplified that out of my like worst insecurities. And that's, that's the line. <laughs> That's where she's born from. I hope that people can take away either identifying with the character themselves and feeling comfort and knowing that there are people within their cultures that are like them. And if they don't identify with it personally, maybe they do know someone who might be going through an identity crisis like that. What drew me to this monologue is because I kind of just related to it. I don't speak Spanish fluently, so that has been an obstacle a lot with acting and with my family too. Um, just kind of fighting both worlds of being Spanish, but 
not being accepted. No, 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 oh, Willa, please stop. Just listen to me. I'm, I'm sorry, we can't have this conversation in Spanish. I know that it kills you, but do you ever consider what it might feel like to have your abuela hate you because of something as silly as language? I wish I could speak it. I wish mom and dad thought they could survive here with Danny and I speaking Spanish, but they were terrified, and you know that. I wish I wasn't fighting for my identity every single day that I wasn't a diversity hire for everyone at work, that I wasn't a coconut for everyone back at home. That the ladies at the taqueria didn't talk poorly about me the moment they knew I couldn't properly converse with them. That my coworkers are happy to bring me into a room when they need a translator and just as happy to dismiss me when I can no longer be an asset to them. But she's the brown girl. Why was she hired if she can't even speak Spanish? I can't be your hope for a better future if you keep denying me at my present. I could try to be more this and more that, but I'm just so sick and tired of walking that line. It's too narrow. If I keep failing both worlds, who is going to catch me when I fall? My name is Gibran Leon, and the monologue I wrote is The Devil Wears Nada. I think it's very relevant to today's uh, climate. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and I guess, you know, I wrote this before election season, but, you know, during, like, the pandemic, everything kind of intertwines politically, socially, medically, I guess you could call it. I just feel like everybody's so on edge about everything because there's so much uncertainty. And I feel like this was, it just kind of encapsulated everything. Well, my name is Ryan Bravo, and the monologue I'm performing today is The Devil Wears Now. I've actually worked in, you know, like the self serving industry. I've worked at a Costco, and just having the experience of dealing with people who don't want to follow the rules or who don't understand what's at stake in not only just the local area, but just the world as a whole, it, it gravitated to such an extent where I could be like, this, this is something that needs to be said whether you know it's from people who have worked those jobs or people who have interacted with people you know who work those kinds of jobs you know it's it's a constant climb up the mountain and these people are pushing for this you guys are having you know event an event like this for writers and actors it's just we need a shot and you guys are providing that and even then NBC you know not just your small off off the rail kind of network station you know a massive corporation giving us a chance and saying let's see what you got Hi, welcome to Grocery Outlet. Don't forget your mask. Ah, <laughs> oh, essential. Essential to who? Is Grocery Outlet not seeing the news? Why the hell are we being expected to come into work right now? The numbers are sickingly high. <sighs> Why are people not listening? Did you see that super lady just walking without a mask? God, what is wrong with these people? What? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what you heard that. That's, that's not a fact, lady, that's, that's opinion. Ma'am, please, uh, just please wear your mask. If not, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Look, please, I, I, I don't wanna argue. I, I'm just too tired as is. Could you please just be courteous? I have a grandfather at home, and well, my mother, she has onset diabetes, and ma'am, 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 ma'am! What? <sighs> ma'am, please put on your mask or get out! What? No, don't touch me! Just, just please abide by your protocol or get out! Lady, are, are you dense? Like, are you stupid? What? No, this isn't my career, I'm a student! Just, Security, Walter, this rude, ignorant, selfish woman is refusing to wear her mask and is putting all of us in danger. Yes, danger, lady, all right? I don't live alone, you know. I have people I love and care about awaiting me when I return home from my, my shift. 
Yo, what is your problem, all right? Can you not show the slightest bit of respect for us, I don't know, essential workers? No, <laughs> you came to us. Look, if you want to endanger your health and your family's health, then guess what? That's perfectly fine by me. But I will not let you put mine in jeopardy over your pathetic, misplaced pride. <laughs> Step out where? Outside. You... You're gonna do what? Fine. Okay then. You want me? You got me. Walter, close the door on this thing, great! <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. I, I, I can't hear you. Uh, I can't hear you through the glass. But if you wear your mask, like, you can come inside and talk to me like a civilized person. I speak two languages. But stupid isn't one of them. Great acting, guys. Woo, very powerful. Now, let's check in with our celebrity judges. Hola a todos, my name is Melissa Barrera and I just wanted to come on here and give a huge shout out and congratulations to the actor and writer finalists of the Yatu Sabes Monologue Slam. So well deserved. It has been a privilege and so beautiful to see your journey thus far and to witness your growth and I cannot wait to see how your careers flourish. So you've made it here, break all the legs, but most importantly, have fun tonight. Sending you all my love. Hi everyone, it's Adriana Varasa sending you all my best. A big congratulations to all of the actor and writer finalists on your well-deserved success. It has been such an honor to be part of your journey and I can't wait to see how your careers flourish. Well, have fun tonight and break a leg, everyone. Hey, what's up everyone? It's John Huertas. And I just want to say to all of the actors and writers who are finalists tonight, congratulations. That is amazing. And I'm really honored that I was able to be a part of your journey and your success. And I know that all of your careers are just going to skyrocket. Now, what I want you to do is get out there tonight, have a great time, and break a leg. Well, I mean, don't, don't actually break a leg. Just, you know, that's the saying for good luck. Thank you to our celebrity judges. And now, back to the show. I do that because I'm Dominican. My name is Angel Irene Guadalupe, and I'm performing Hope for the Future. I don't know, in my experience, there's a lot of pressure on the millennials, like 20s and 30s, to kind of like have it all figured out. And you know, my parents were parents in their early 20s, and I think that's the story for a lot of people. So there's some expectations. And that's not always the case. And I like that this monologue really got into that in a funny way, but it's a really, it's a real issue that a lot of us kind of experience, you know? And I just had a lot of fun with it. We were thinking about during a pandemic too, we were looking on Instagram, cause you know, it's all, everyone's on Instagram, right? And you see these kids that are like our age and they're like partying and we're like, well, how are they living this like awesome life when, you know, it just feels so grim. And so that was kind of just this, we wanted to write this kind of cathartic piece about just feeling like hopeless, but at the end of the day, going back to what we love, like <laughs> <laughs> chips and and, uh, and just kind of like finding hope. I think it's important to be good at what you do and not have any abbreviations and just being flat out good. Good art, good writing, good camera, good direction, good pacing, and it's not, oh, it's a, you know, prefacing it to, this is a cultural thing, this is a Latin thing, no, this is just good art. Like, let us have our flowers, let us be good at what we do. And, but we actually have to bring ourselves to the arena and be amazing. You know there are 19 year olds with million dollar deals? And I'm on my couch eating takis, watching Beauty and the Baker, like it's my job. You know, I, I tried to do a 24 hour fast once, but, by hour four, I forgot because my mom made huevos rancheros that morning and you, chiquito, do not want to miss out on some little huevito. I made a promise that I would be really fluent in Spanish. That's when I was in the third grade and I'm in my 20s now and I can't even fully enjoy a Bad Bunny song. I wake up every day and I tell myself, you are going to get it today. You are going to finally see what you want out of life. You are unstoppable. You are. 
And then I realize I've just spent the last three hours trying to hype myself up while some 15-year-old builds their empire on TikTok. I feel like the odds are stacked against me. I wake up and I see kids my age in the Bahamas. And I'm out here on Saturday mornings cleaning my mom's bathroom windows with Fabuloso. Sometimes it feels like I'm already out of the race. But this channel, this idiotic channel where I videotape myself reviewing different chips, as dumb as it sounds, this is the only purpose I have in life right now. There is no greater satisfaction than seeing someone write in the comments, thank you for recommending Trader Joe's brands because my chips were the talk of the potluck. Even my boss asked me where I got them. Without this, I don't have a reason to get up in the morning. So, please, can you just give me the discount on the Fritos this one time? You may not know this, but you are saving a life. My name is Enrique Quintero, and my monologue is Yo Soy Awesome. Inspiration came one day when, out of many, just like a lot of actors, writers in the city, I was looking for a day job. I kept telling myself, should I tell them the truth or not about my actual employment history? <laughs> Because you know, uh, as an actor, you need a job that is you know flexible, pays well, because this place is expensive. So in my 10 years that I've been here, I've accumulated quite the list of, of odd jobs, of course. My name is Nerea Duarte, and I am performing Yo Soy Awesome. This one stuck out to me because of a moment that I feel like we all have, which is we start to talk, start to talk about ourselves, and then we just go on, and we're not sure where it's going. And then we're stuck in a situation where you're, everybody's watching and you just get that panic moment, like, oh God, what have I said? Man, nosotros, NBC, thank you for giving us a voice, for giving us the opportunity and to get our stories in, our faces in, our culture in. And it's, it's about time, so I'm so glad we're all working together. Do you know how awesome I am? When I was born, I had such a freakishly strong baby grip, I allegedly broke the nurse's finger. She freaked out and called me El Anticristo. And that's a story of how I was banned from every Catholic church at age zero. And I was smarter than all of my peers growing up. I had straight A's in all my classes, except for pottery. I never got anything but a D in pottery. But my mother had very high hopes for me. She'd say, mira nena, you are destined to become the greatest dermatologist or lawyer in all upstate Rhode Island. Me cagan la crica de Marta. But I had bigger plans. Dorotea Cristal Román Villa, Quintero de Guadalupe de Suárez de Hernández Eduard. Bigger plants in Rhode Island, but like smaller than New Jersey. Oh, here's a fun fact about me. I was voted most likely to succeed hmm? at the mental hospital. But don't worry, I was there voluntarily. The handcuffs and the gurneys, it's all for show. Oh, let's play a game. I'm going to list every job I've had in the last 10 years, and one of them isn't going to be true. Can you guess which one that is? Flight attendant. Amateur wrestler. Magician. Sit, stay, stay. Dog trainer. Oh, teacher. Stripper. Boner pill salesman. Boop, boop, boop. Marine biologist. Surprise! They're all true. I literally work in anything that doesn't have to do with creepy twins that smile at each other too much and pottery. So yeah, I think I have a lot to offer to this company. When do I um? When do, when do I start? What? Another wardrobe change. There you go. Que lo que. You know what it is. Anyways, thank you to all our writer judges who helped pick our monologue finalists. Let's hear from one of them right now. Hi, everyone. This is Eugene Garcia Cross. I'm sending out a huge congratulations to all of our actor and writer finalists. Uh, I'm honored to have been a part of this, and, and it's been a thrill to watch you guys. Uh, you're, you're, you're success is amazing. I, I, am, I'm, I cannot wait to see what things you guys do, amazing things you guys do. Just have fun, break a leg, and uh, good luck.
Fantastic. Thank you to all our writer judges and acting judges. I got to keep thanking them because if not, they get sensitive and emotional. The writer judges start writing emails and the acting judges get real dramatic on the phone. Anyway, let's get back to the show. Uh, hi, my name is Christopher Lopez and I wrote the monologue Net Queen. When it comes to female characters, I feel like today and the delicacy of writing as like a male writer, especially, I think it's our job if you're going to go down that route to be able to write a character that has substance, to be able to write material that uh, an actor or actress can actually play with and make it their own. So with writing that piece, I knew that there was a fine line I would have to write where it didn't seem like campy or it didn't seem like I was trying to talk down on the whole OnlyFans thing. Um, which is why I felt like the business aspect of it could make it an empowering type of thing. I'm Cindy De La Cruz and I'll be performing Net Queen. I chose this piece uh, because it just felt like so empowering, right? I, I just felt like so empowered reading it and then practicing it just felt really empowered and it's funny and I never get to be funny even though I think I'm pretty funny. I think this piece is relevant today because um, especially now during COVID, so many different people are trying to find ways to make money, um, especially you know in our industries where it's like we don't really know when the next job is going to come, or you know our our side hustles don't exist anymore. You know what? Screw it. Username. Okay. Uh, Queen Kitty. Taken. Okay, uh, I'll just go with Queen Kitty one. Okay, profile pick. Get like my boots in there. Some claws. Okay, bio. I'm a cat. Check. Okay, I think I'm good to go. Jesus Christ, there's like so many freaking people on this thing. <laughs> this is fucking amazing. I mean, think about it. I have a chance, well, we have a chance to be like small business owners in the comfort of our own homes and all we have to do is post a few scandy pictures in our underwear. Like, I've been doing that for free for years and some guys didn't even ask for it. Like, I just did it out of the kindness of my own heart. But now, this is business, okay? So no cash, no ass. I need a system, like a foolproof marketing and distribution system. So what do we know? White men love fetishizing Latinas, but their deep-rooted misogyny is our financial gain, baby. Like, hell, I don't even speak Spanish that well, but they don't gotta know that. Okay, okay, so, okay, so I'm thinking like one picture a day to start, and then on Sunday fun days, I'll post like a 30 second video of me doing something stupid, like eating cereal in my underwear or like playing video games with like my tits popping out. Yet the point is, it doesn't fucking matter. These men and women get off more on this idea of exclusive intimacy than they do actual content. I never said that content was king. And for that reason, us queens get to thrive using whatever we got, whenever we want, and however we wanna do it, okay? What we say goes, and their card will still be on file next month. My name is Denise Zamora, and I wrote the monologue In Your Hands. What inspired me is the need that I had inside to really share this experience that I myself went through. It is not autobiographical, but certainly I think as any artist does, they pull from their real lives. And not only that, it's a story I don't hear very much about. As we all know, the Latinx community is huge. We aren't just one group with all these things that are the same, right? We have so many little things here and there that make us unique. Um, and because of that, we have our own cultural elements that do influence our stories of either wanting to be parents or not, or having families. But underneath that all is our human experience. Hi, my name is Lisa Marie and I'm performing In Your Hands. As an actor, I tend to love comedy more. It's easier for me, I'm drawn to comedy, and so some part of me was saying, you know what, let's 
let's try something different. It's, it's much more dramatic. It's, it's much more of a serious situation. Um, maybe some people don't like to talk about. And I said, let's go for it. I think this piece is very relevant today because we've seen over m with more research that women are continually having more trouble having children naturally and even men men are having issues women are having issues so therefore having a child naturally is can be very difficult for a lot of people You even come to me to dream with it, and yet here I am. <laughs> Another test stick for the trash. <laughs> I guess it's true what they say, huh? God has a plan. Everything happens for a reason. All I know is I'm tired. I'm tired of the ovulation kits, the fertility drugs, the tears, <laughs> the money spent. It's exhausting. To wait and hope. Only to be disappointed over and over and over again. And in the bathroom. You're always disappointed in the bathroom. Maybe I stop. I won't have to tell people we're trying. I won't have to see the look of pity on their faces when they realize it all didn't work again. <laughs> Not to have to hear, but you're Mexican. Are you born fertile? <laughs> it's not fair to want something so much. You're right. I don't need kids. Why do we even want them? <laughs> no more peeing on test sticks, right? Fine. If I accept this fate, then what the hell was it all for? Leave it all up to God, they said. Why would he lead me on like that? Two years, huh? I'm tired. Tired of the expectation I, I should be able to do this one thing. I'm tired of believing. I wanted to believe in you. I really did. But I can't. Not anymore. This stops now. This stops now. Hi, my name is Desiree Carcamo, and I am a writer finalist for the Nosotros Yet Sabes Monologue Slam. And I wrote the monologue, Not All the Matters Look the Same. The monologue deals with uh, your identity and like the Latina card or the Latinx card and how closely you identify with your community and can that be revoked. 
honestly, like my whole life, I've been really insecure about that. Like I grew up in South Central LA, um, and then I moved to a wider area, and I had to go to like very white schools. And then as I started talking to, like, when I talked to my grandmother, she even started saying, like, oh, well, you're not really Mexican. And even here in the United States, there's so much diversity, and I, I never want to take that away from people. Like, oh, you're not Latinx because you're not this, or you don't look like that, or you're not from this culture, or you don't speak Spanish. It's like, are Brazilian people not Latinx? My name is Jacqueline Guillen, and I will be performing Not All Tamales Are The Same. Or is it look the same? Do you want to do it again? Well, I mean, the title, obviously, and I also really liked that there was a, a specificity to the um, pronunciation, that they were like, make sure you, you don't, you know, pronounce it in Spanish and not the, you know, English pronunciation that we hear all the time. So I was like, good. That is a good, you know, uh, instructions because everybody should know how to pronounce tamales. And then also, I've always run to, you know, run against people looking at me and, denying that I'm Mexican and uh, being like, no, you're not. No, you're not. There's no way you're Mexican. And I'm just so annoyed by that constant comment and just idea that all Latinos look a specific way, that all Latinos sound a specific way, that all Latinos, you know, are one, you know, one model. And that's like the one thing that really drew me to the monologue. I'm being indicted by the Latinidad Certification Review Board? Is this because of the Latino Student Union thing last week? Like, when we all went around in a circle to say what our favorite band was, and everyone was like, Selena, Chicano Batman, Pedro Infante, Pat Bunny, and then I said, Harry Styles? Because if it is about that, I, I swear the only reason I listen to white people music is because I went to an all-white high school. And, and o sea, isn't the way everyone looked at me, I mean, punishment enough? I've never felt less Latina in my entire life. Or did I not pass my Latinidad certification test? No, o sea, I, I've been studying for that my entire life. I mean, countless novelas, newscasts with Jorge Ramos, all the pan dulce. <gasps> I answered the last essay question wrong, didn't I? In case of the apocalypse, a bolillo is more essential than a conchita, isn't it? Ay, pero conchitas taste so good. Um, señorita. Lawyer. Is there a way we can appeal this decision? Porque honestamente, if uh, naca tamales, umitas, tamales dulces, and tamales rojos are all called tamales, then why can I be 100% certified Latina? O sea, not all tamales look the same. So what, should all Latinos be the same? Because my mom is Mexican and a little tan. My dad's Salvadorian and a little white. My great-great-grandmother is indígena, and I'm from here. And then there's Afro-Latinos and Asian-Latinos and don't even get me started with religion and all the different types of languages. Just because you are a tamal dulce and I'm a tamal de rajas does not mean I am not a tamal. Oh, this is a good one here. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the Yatu Sabe creative consultant, director, Rachel Ramos. She helped guide our performers through their monologues. Hey, Rachel. What's going on? Congratulations to all of you, to all of the writers. Beautiful work. To all of the actors, you're incredible. You're inspiring. The world needs you, and y'all are ready. And I am so happy and honored to be a small part of this journey. And I can't wait to see all of you book your next episodes and movies and all the things, and I can't wait to work with all of you again. Thank you, Rachel Raymonds, for your wonderful guidance, and thank you to the judges. And now, back to the show. Yeah, I gotta keep thanking the judges. They're, I told you before, they're emotional people. My name is Jay Anthony Roman, and the monologue I wrote is Evelyn Torres at the ICU. My inspiration for it was really family dynamics and sort of the complexities that come with that. The piece is all about sort of, you know, where we live, with our families, in our hearts, and how that sort of affects us 
when we're interacting with like the rest of the world. My name is Brittany Benjamin. Uh, the monologue is Evelyn Torres at the ICU. I think I usually try to bring in a little piece of myself to everything I'm doing. Um, this one specifically, my dad is actually sick right now. The thing is, is my dad is the opposite of this dad. He is incredibly selfless um, and a really, really special person to me. And yeah, so I guess at the same time as having a connection, I also had this maybe sympathy for what she was going through. Evie, life is not a TV show. Something my mom used to say to me. And saying that to a kid is like both good intentioned and ill natured simultaneously. You know what I mean? It's like, so you're saying life is not a TV show because you want me to get my head out of my ass and my supposed life together. Cool. My mom deputized herself to be the alarm clock of my dreams because she wanted me to wake up and not be her. Generous. What she didn't realize was sobering me up to the daily realities of adulthood would just tear away any sense of wonder that I had. It's just mean and wrong because you know what? Life is a TV show to some people. Like my dad, he's in the ICU in there. Oh, he was the star of his own show. Just like the lead on one of those sitcoms, you know? He didn't even have to move to LA. It's like, no matter who he betrayed or hurt, by the end of the episode, it was all as it should be, at least according to him. You know why I would like living in a TV show? Because it's all written out in neon. You know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Like that man in there, he taught me how to ride my bike. It's the same man who had to give up my laptop for a gambling debt. It's the same man who set my boyfriend's car on fire in 11th grade because I'd found out he cheated on me. and is the same man who broke my mother's jaw. I should hate him. But I can't, because he is my dad. He's the star. And I am so sick of being just another character in his show. <laughs> ah, I gotta go. Uh, no, no, I have a lot of people I can talk to, so. I'll take another cigarette, though, if you wanna be generous. Thanks. Maybe it's time I start working on my spinoff. The inspiration behind Brown Billboards was basically just kind of like this uh, huge YouTube boom that like has started, uh, as we all know. And I feel like because of the lack of representation that we have in mainstream media, our Latino folks found a home basically where we could create things for free on YouTube. And it started off as something very beautiful, right? Like it was something that I had like dreams of doing too when I was in college. I was like, oh, that's like a way to do something. And somewhere along the way, you know, it kind of gets lost a little bit. And that's what I wanted to touch on. The piece was written from the perspective of the brother and there was something that I was like, oh, this is something that my brother would tell me if he was like, you're kind of messing up a little bit, you know? And, and people need that. Some people need like a guide. Uh, my name is Pierre G. Gonzalez and I will be performing Brown Billboards. Well, yeah, I was drawn to this monologue uh, mainly because it calls out, you know, our people in, in, in how we digest, uh, you know, I guess in, in, in the entertainment world, how we're being represented and it's, uh, kind of stopping us to be like, we are more than these caricatures. Like I said, the first thing when I, when I did see the breakdown and I saw what you guys were doing, for me, picking these writers and like I reading through all the monologues, it made me very emotional and it made me so proud to see that 
our stories are, are being written. <laughs> Dog, you started a movement. A fucking new wave of Latinos proud to be who they were, unapologetically. And then what? Hmm? Saliste vendido. You turn our beautiful people into these generic caricatures of themselves. You sacrificed our culture and humanity, all in the name of your brand. Y pa qué? Huh? Well, for, for some internet clout and a handout from these companies that prey on our hunger to be accepted by America? Ah, bro. De aprovechaste de la gente. Man, you're better than this, and you know it. That's why you can't even look at me right now. now. They won't tell you this, porque no le importan, but they don't give a fuck about you or your fans. I mean, all, you, all they care about is the money you're making them and the connections you can get them. You walk around now like you're so goddamn special, but you're not. You're, you're a brown billboard with a heartbeat. That's all you are to them. Now our people, our people will buy what you push, even if they can't afford it. Because at the end of the day, we just want to be accepted by them, to fit in, to be seen as one of them. Equals. <laughs> Equals. You know the sad part is? We never will be. And neither will you. You know, I believe that deep down inside, there's still that young kid who created all of this with just a camera and a dream. You got a gift, bro. The power to bring people together and listen. Why not give them something worth hearing? <laughs> Congratulations to all the finalists. Job well done. And thank you to our sponsors and supporters. We truly appreciate you. Don't forget to follow Nosotros on Instagram and Facebook at Nosotros.org. For more information on becoming a member, be sure to go to Nosotros.org.com. And now, make sure you go vote for your favorite monologue and performance. Thank you for watching the Nosotros Second Annual Ya Tu Sabe Monologue Slam presented by NBC. Good night, everybody. What are you doing here? Go, go vote. I told you, go vote. I don't understand why you talk to people and they don't listen to you. Man, I'm telling you, I'm tired. It's been a long day. I had to do this all by myself. No one's even here. There is a crew, but they're a skeleton crew. I mean, literally, skeleton crew. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, did we order catering already? I think we did, maybe, possibly. My God, I killed this. I really did, I really did. You're still here? Go. Go. Hey. What are you what are you still doing here? I said good night. Go vote. Online. Nosotrosorg.com. Nosotrosorg.com. That's where you go. Jesus, you tell people stuff and they're not listening. We all right? This, this should be a wrap, right? Everybody doing okay? Woo, long day. I know, I know, I know. And I didn't get my chicken fingers. I love chicken fingers. Ah, I'm a grown baby. That's what my wife says. Mm. I ate escargot once. I let it go right there where I ate it. What? No, she's not here. 
I never say stuff like this to her face. I'm scared of her. Violent woman. She's Colombian. She tried to stab me once with a twist. Yeah, only assassins had the twist. At in and out you can survive that. But a twist, uh, the doctor sees you. Uh, no way you're going to survive that. God be with him. Yeah, legit. All right. Okay. And you're still here? 